was a rumble in the jungle once I heard dad was outside again counting birds And mama plugged in the nightlight and I saw the queen of the world Welcome to the Golden Hour Birth Podcast. I am your host Liz. Here is your host Natalie. And tonight we have Kelly on, who is a mom of two from the Illinois area. She'll probably explain exactly where. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for joining us tonight, Kelly. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. So we can go ahead and jump on in to a little bit about your family and we can go from there. Sure. Yeah, so like you were saying, I am from Illinois. My husband, Luke, and I met in 2017, actually through an online dating app, through Bumble. Mm -hmm. And then we got married pretty quickly, just a little over a year after we met in 2018. And then we actually had our first daughter at the beginning of 2019. Um, So right now, I am a stay-at-home mom of two little girls, ages three and a half and one. So that's a little background. Same as me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all got little one year olds. <laughs> yeah. The crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. It's so fun, right? Yeah. yeah. So fun. So we can go ahead and jump into like knowing that you guys wanted to start a family and then finding out that you were pregnant. Yeah. So our story was actually maybe a little bit untraditional compared to some. Because we actually weren't married yet and weren't really, like, planning on having kids at the time. We had talked about marriage, obviously, and knew that we wanted to have kids someday. But it wasn't, you know, in the current plans at that time. So, (laughs) um, you know, we were madly in love. We knew we were going to get married um, sooner than later. Yeah, so we were ready for the next chapter. But Mm -hmm. we decided to go to Florida for our one-year dating anniversary. We had a little bit too much fun. <laughs> and then a month later, my period was late, which rarely happened, so it was a little surprising. But I wasn't initially worried because I had no symptoms whatsoever. Like, mm-hmm. no nausea, my boobs weren't sore, no fatigue that was out of the ordinary, nothing, mm-hmm. like nothing. So didn't think too much of it. I actually even went out with one of my friends the night before, and we were joking about taking a test, and thank God we did it. Yeah. (laughs) So the next day, I was like, you know, it's like, I think it was the sixth day or something, and I'm like, all right, I should probably go get a test. (laughs) So I had heard that the dollar stores have them, and I was like, well, why not? (laughs) So they are actually accurate. (laughs) For anybody that doesn't know, dollar stores sell them. I did not know Uh, that. (laughs) But yeah, so I I had told Luke, we were living together at the time, but I had told them that I was going to take a test. And I'm like, I'll just do it before you get home. And, you know, we both assumed it would be negative. So took it and it was positive. And I was in complete shock. And like every emotion hit me all at once. I was nervous, fearful. I felt sick. (laughs) I was panicked, a little excited, of course, too, but like terrified. Immediately, I was like, pacing and I texted Luke and he was on his way home he was driving and I was like yeah just just come home quickly <laughs> and obviously like he, he knew what that meant yeah and then I just I just scared I just started bawling because it was just not part of the plan yeah but when he got home he was obviously like nervous too but he held it together so well it's very comforting and then I just I, I was just like I don't, I don't maybe it's not accurate I need more tests so we went out and bought all the expensive ones, like four more. Of course, because those give you a better reading. (laughs) (laughs) And every single one of them came back positive, and I was just shook. I could not even believe it. And part of the reason I was so, like, scared, because I I knew I wanted to have kids one day, but I also have narcolepsy. So Mm. I knew that my doctor was going to want me to go off on medication during that time, and that's actually something that, Luke knew as well because he came with me to one of my appointments at one point just so we could know all that kind of stuff for future reference. So it was just kind of like, oh crap, I have to go off this medication. This is what keeps me awake and functioning. And, you know, I don't know how that's going to go. My only hope with that was that I had read in the past on so many different like Facebook groups and whatnot that some of them, some people that have narcolepsy 
and they go off medication, they actually feel okay while they're pregnant. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's something to do with the hormones. It's very weird. Yeah. But thankfully, I was one of those people that, I mean, I was, I was insanely tired, yes. But I was able to, like, still function enough and, like, work. So, so that was, that was good. Yeah. But, yeah, it was just all shocking. But my pregnancy then obviously progressed. Uh, The first trimester honestly ended up being the best trimester for me, which was very, you know, strange and different from what I had heard in most people's cases. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you know, like, things slowly started to progress. Like, my boobs finally started hurting. (laughs) Like, my butt looked pregnant before my belly did. It was very (laughs) strange. But, yeah, I thought I was going to be one of those people that just loved being pregnant and I was wrong (laughs) because after that trimester it it was just not not great I had insane nausea vomiting that never went away oh my goodness until after delivery and it was not just morning sickness like you hear it was all day sickness Um, and I had to bring a coffee cup with me pretty much everywhere because you know I never knew when I was gonna have to throw up Uh, (laughs) And yeah, my doctor at the time wouldn't even give me anything. So it was like, it was complete torture. <laughs> and then I, you know, I went from being like a very active person, working out, feeling good and having energy to like the opposite of all of that. <laughs> so yeah, it was just, it was awful. And yeah. the, the heartburn came on to, I, I could have swore I was having like a dragon instead of a baby. It was just <laughs> so bad. And then, yeah, it just, it was just a struggle from there. Like, I just, I didn't feel like myself. I felt like, you know, the old me was just gone. It was was kind of depressing. I mean, I didn't fall into like full on depression, but like, it was just depressing in general feeling that way. And I also felt horrible for having all those feelings of like, I don't like this. (laughs) Like, I'm not enjoying this. Uh, because I wanted to feel grateful and like I was grateful, but it, it just wasn't fun for me. <laughs> and I didn't feel like I could really talk about it because I hadn't really heard anybody else who'd been through that. And I was afraid of you know, being judged in that way. Mm-hmm. So only like my really close friends that I had conversations with it about. So, but then, you know, there was obviously a lot of other symptoms that come with it, like insomnia, having to pee all night and day. <laughs> Fatigue. Um, I actually ended up passing a kidney stone during the time oh as well, no. which was pretty cool. <laughs> First time too. I've never even had kidney stones before, so that was surprising. It was just all so much. And then during all of this too, I mean, I was in a relationship that I had only been in for a year, and you know, and then he he ended up proposing, and we got married when I was like 22 weeks pregnant, and like right in the thick of it. <laughs> And I definitely did throw it up on that day. And that was just not cool. <laughs> but yeah, and then because I was so sick the whole time, I don't know, I was just completely unprepared. And I just didn't even have the energy to like look into anything birth related mm-hmm. or you know, kid related or like just none of it. I, I basically only watched some birth videos or some some show i think it was on tlc but i'm not 100 sure so i did very very minimal planning and i just assumed you know it's a natural process i don't really need to prepare for this and i don't really have the energy so i'm just not going to do it mm-hmm. so at the end of the pregnancy you know i just really was slowing down on everything i cut back my hours at work and then right at 38 weeks i, I was just like i'm done i'm not going to work after 38 weeks and thank goodness, because everything escalated so much worse at this point with like the vomiting. So I was just, it was, it just really ramped up and it was all day and night long. Because most of the time I could mostly get through the night, but this was like 24 7. Like I just could not keep anything down. So I had to keep going into the hospital and getting IVs uh, every single day, every single night. Like oh it, it was just wow. for the entire week. Or, <sighs> From 38 weeks to 39 weeks. Wow. So, yes. And during this time, I also was having contractions every three to five minutes the entire time. Oh <laughs> so I was getting zero sleep, basically. 
I was just like absolutely miserable. I was just like, just put me out of my misery. I can't do it. So I went to my doctor and I was like, all right, we, what, what can we do? We need to do something because I feel like I'm dying. And he's like, all right, let's do an induction at 39 weeks. He was a little nervous about it because I had not progressed at all during the cervical checks that they did, which were extremely painful. Mm-hmm. Um, no progression whatsoever. None. It wasn't dilated at all or face or anything. So he warned me like, it could be a process. I was just like, I, I just, I can't do this anymore. We, we got to go. So yeah, we began the induction process. The first thing they did was cervical, which is basically like a camera. <laughs> they put up there and has the medication in it and it's was supposed to help soften the cervix. So I had that in for 12 hours and overnight that night was just pretty miserable like it had been the contractions even ramped up even more they're becoming more painful and then by morning they're like all right we'll take it out and see how you do and then maybe do pitocin or something well it did nothing literally was still not dilated whatsoever just no progress and i was just like what am, what can we do? I'm like, this is just awful. I'm, I was still throwing up and everything. So, and this was in the morning at this time. And I had a new nurse come in and she checked me. And she, and I, you know, I'm like sobbing through everyone. And so she checked me and she was like, did anybody, has anybody told you that you have an extremely narrow pelvic inlet? And I was like, uh, no, what is that? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. And so she was like, well, let me have the doctor check you in a little bit and, you know, we'll, we'll discuss. So the doctor came in, he checked me again, falling through the whole thing. And he was like, yeah, you know, you do, you have a very narrow pelvic inlet. And I was like, okay, so what, what are you telling me? What does this mean? And he's like, well, the chance, basically the chances of you delivering vaginally are pretty slim. And I was like, oh okay (laughs) well can you elaborate on that a little bit more like what like what is the normal you know what is that like so and I asked him for a percentage I was like could you you at least give me like a percentage like what are my chances here and he said 30 percent and I was like I'm done (laughs) done done yeah in the space Mary I don't care what you have to do get her out (laughs) I I was like 30% 30% was just like, and I, I, you know, I had always pictured that I was just going to do it vaginally, but yeah. I was, that just threw me. I was just, I'm done. Let's go. Let's do it. So he's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so then I started to get a little bit more excited. I was like, all right, it's time to end this misery. Be done with this chapter. On to the next. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to meet her and not be pregnant anymore. <laughs> let's just go. So Obviously, my job at that point was over. It was all in the hands of the staff. The epidural, I were kind of freaked out right after just because it's like, I can still wiggle my toes. Is this <laughs> normal? And they were like, you know, yeah, it's, it's a little weird that you're still able to wiggle them, but, you know, can you feel things? And I was like, I can feel kind of, like, don't, don't stab me yet. <laughs> and they're like, you know, don't worry, we'll wait until it's all good. So it took, it took quite a while. And then, you know, finally, like I couldn't feel anything. They started the procedure. My husband wasn't in the room at the time. So that was a little weird, but there was finally no pain or anything. He ended up coming in, sitting by my head. And the procedure itself was, well, it was, it was felt very terrifying to me. Even though I was ready for it and it wasn't an emergency, it was just like, I felt so helpless. Um, and like kind of panicked like what was what was going to happen I just never been in that state of like vulnerability before and like I you know I couldn't move my arms they had them stretched out to the side they weren't strapped down or anything but you know I was not supposed to move them and you know and at one point I felt very like faint and I got sick again right in the middle of all of it I didn't actually throw up but I, I just felt very sick and I they held it up next to me, but yeah. And then it, there was a lot of tugging and pulling and then they got her out and I, I didn't hear a cry initially and it definitely, it kind of like freaked me out. And I heard them say, Oh, you know, the, the cords wrapped around your neck twice. And then I heard them say Mac, 
which from those little videos I watched, I knew Mac meant the phone. And so whenever I saw those videos, it was like a panic thing. And so I just started panicking. I was just like, you know, oh, oh my gosh, like, is she going to be okay? Is she going to be okay? And I was shouting, shouting, nobody's answering me. So I'm like freaking out. And then finally, after what seemed like forever, you know, they cleared it from her. I don't know if it was like full on in her lungs or just in her mouth or what. I, I don't really know, honestly. But then I finally heard her cry and I was just bawling, obviously. So yeah, they brought her over to my cheek. You know, they took a quick picture and then whisked her right away, got her measurements. And I really wish I would have asked more questions because I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what that whole process was going to look like. I just assumed she was going to stay right there with me. You know, maybe some measurements and then come back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Luke went with them. He got more pictures and whatnot. And then, you know, I just, I just laid there <laughs> waiting for this to be over. And then they told me, they come, came back for like maybe a minute. And then they said, okay, we're going to take your husband and the baby into another room. And I was like, what, what do you mean? Like, why, why, are, how much longer is this going to be? And they're like, oh, well, maybe another, like, I don't remember, like 10, 20 minutes. I was like, no, no, no. Like, why, why do they have to go? I need, I need my husband. I need them. And they're like, no, no, he has to go. And so I, I was like panicking and I was like, no, Luke, you need to stay with me. You need to stay with me. Like, I'm, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. And so he did for a little bit. And then the nurses ended up being like, no, he's good. He's got to go. And I was like, okay, fine. Just let him go with the baby. So the anesthesiologist held my hand, you know, I was trying to calm me down, but I just felt like so Sorry, I'm a little emotional. Oh. That sounds really scary. Sorry. <laughs> you need to apologize. That does sound really scary. But yeah, so I just like, I felt really alone in that moment. Yeah. Was there a reason why they needed him to go to another room? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know if there was, because it was a small room. I don't know if it was crowded or or what but but yeah they just like you know kicked him right out and and then I was just like there and it just felt so strange mm. without my baby and without my husband yeah but anyways and you're like so, just looking up like on these like to yeah, faces you don't like even know it's a very unnatural kind of feeling yeah and uh, like all of it the entire process was like extremely unnatural yeah so Anyways, whew. so anyways, they finished out sewing me up, and then they took me into the room with him. Mm -hmm. And you know, I had always thought like, oh, I'll do like skin to skin right away. You know, I thought maybe he could do that right away. It just wasn't how it was. It just wasn't wasn't what I envisioned at all. Mm -hmm. huh. I you know, they took me in. My daughter was swaddled up, lying in a bassinet, like he wasn't even holding her or anything. And he was like, well, I didn't know if I should pick her up. I didn't know if like you wanted need to hold her before you <laughs> like we hadn't Aww. talked about any of this so he was like I didn't know what to do I just so I just left her there. <laughs> and she was fine she wasn't crying or anything but you know it was something I was like man you really probably should have talked about <laughs> so anyways they finally brought her to me and you know we did skin to skin and we tried breastfeeding and it was interesting because that first feeding was actually the only one that wasn't like super painful <laughs> at that time mm -hmm. um and i've since learned that sometimes when you have the epidural you can still be numb and like it can end all the way up there so it didn't hurt <laughs> for that initial time and i was like oh hey this is maybe this is not gonna be so bad well they got me to my my room where i was gonna be staying for a few days and i i finally was like realizing hey okay, like i'm I'm not sick anymore. This is this kind of nice. And you know, the next few hours felt great. I was like, this is awesome. Like I don't feel sick. I don't feel a lot of pain in this moment. My baby's here. This is awesome. Like I'm so excited. And you know, my my parents came, my husband's parents came, his siblings came, and I even had a few friends stop by. Like I felt great. And then a few hours later, after that, everything got flipped back on its head. Um, you know, pregnancy hormones, wild. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> right. Wild. Uh, wild. So first, you know, like after the C-section, they're like, okay, we want you to get up. 
and try to walk around. And I'm like, okay, let's let's try this. So I was starting to walk. I'd made it from the bed to the chair, even sat down in the chair, got back up, going back to the bed, was trying to lower myself down into the bed. And this is so crazy. My neck went out. <laughs> oh no. My neck went completely out. So as my, my arm was like pushing, I was trying to like lower myself down. It just went out on me. So I like couldn't hold myself up with my arm anymore. So I was like screaming and like everybody ran over and I was like, I need help, I need help, I need help. So they lowered me back down to the bed and I was just like, oh, my neck's out. But it's just out. <laughs> like oh what, what just happened? I'm like, this can't be real. So from there, it was all that kind of pain, plus C-section pain, plus hormones just taking over my entire body and you know of course like we were trying to breastfeed and I was starting to feel like okay this is actually very painful and with my neck also being out anytime I tensed up it made my neck worse so every time I would nurse it would make my entire body feel 10 times worse Mm -hmm. and then obviously there was like afterbirth contractions which nobody told me about I had no <laughs> idea and I was like why is it hurting down there yeah. what is and I, I was just in so much pain all over my entire body and then gas pains too which I did not know about mm-hmm. there was just gas pains and I almost wonder if that was part of this neck thing because it was like in my shoulder blade and it was just like and I, I wonder if part of it was also just gas trapped up inside and it was uh, but they keep trying, they're like pushing the breastfeeding. And so I would just scream and cry each time. And they were just like looking at me, I don't know why it's so painful. And I'm just like, I don't know either, but like, I, I can't do this. And they never gave me an option of formula or anything like that. So I was just like, okay, my only option, I guess, is to just push through this. Mm-hmm. So I would try. Sometimes they're like, okay, well, let's just maybe try a nipple shield or something and I sort of try that then I was just like even that hurts so can we do something else they're like okay let's just try pumping you know and it you're not really making much at least I wasn't at that point it's just like colostrum and it's mm-hmm. very little of it mm-hmm. so they were literally like pump and then take a little tiny syringe <laughs> and get what they could and then just push it in her mouth and I was just like oh my gosh and I was like she's just gonna like waste away <laughs> there's nothing there but we just kept pushing it and I was very surprised to find out that they needed to eat so often I don't know why I didn't know this maybe, it, maybe a lot of people don't I didn't think a lot of people don't really know this if you don't take a course or something but like they have to eat every two hours and I did not know this and and that's about two hours from the time that they start. So, and my daughter was, she would eat for like an hour to an hour and a half. Oh my gosh. And then, yeah, it was ridiculous. And and then half hour later, they'd be like, all right, it's time to feed the baby again. And I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I legit just put her down. <laughs> A half hour ago, give me a break. And they're like, no, she needs to eat every two hours. We got to make sure that she gets back up the birth weight. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, it was just, oh, it was just, I, I was just in complete shock with all of it. So, and then the other part of it is I'm allergic to anti-inflammatories. So I was not able to have, like, the normal pain meds. I was on, I was on, like, it was Norco with Tylenol, the acetaminophen, but you can only take so much Tylenol. So, you know, in between all this, I was just like in such horrible pain. Oh, and I was like, I need something. And they're like, no, sorry. And I'm like, oh, okay, oh, horrible. And then, you know, with everything I had going on, they had to keep the catheter in longer, which made going pee that first time like very hard and like took forever. And it's kind of painful and everything. I didn't know to expect any of that. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, with all of that going on, I did not feel connected to my baby. And it was was probably not until, like, you know, three to four, even maybe days later, that I was just like, okay, like, I guess, I guess you're kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
I, you know, I had this like intense love, but it was also just like, I just don't feel this connection that I thought I was going to feel. Mm-hmm. So, and honestly, it felt, it felt a little bit like I was in hell. Like it was just, it was just not what I envisioned at all. So yeah. And then just the, the whole rest is best thing just was sticking in my head and I'm like, right, I'm determined to do this. I, I've got to do this. You know, and then meanwhile, through all of this, you know, I still had friends and family texting me, asking me to come see the baby. And you know, I didn't know any better and I felt obligated to say yes. So I did. And I was just like, yeah, it's fine. And then actually it gets a, it's a little bit of work. So I forgot about that. So on the third day, while while some of my visitors were there, I noticed that my stomach was like really itchy. So I, you know, started messing around with the binder and everything and I looked and I, my stomach was one giant rash. It was <laughs> extremely red and completely just a huge rash. And it extended everywhere that the binder touched my skin. So even onto my back, my stomach, everywhere. And it was horrible. They, I don't know what the holdup was, but they were not giving me like anything for it, like any cream or anything. Um, so I was just like, just all around miserable. <laughs> so um, <good. laughs> Man. Uh, did they offer a like, lactation consultant in the hospital at all? You know, they they did. And there were some that came in. And that that's a good point. Because actually, like, the lactation consultants at the hospital, at this specific hospital, I did not feel like were super helpful or knowledgeable, especially when it came to lip ties and tongue ties. Mm-hmm which she did end up having. And I didn't find out about that until she was like eight or nine months old when she got her two front teeth. And I was just like, what is this piece of skin between her teeth? Yeah. Like I had no clue. And when I had it evaluated by like a pediatric dentist, they were like, she's got a lip and tongue tie. They're like, did you have trouble breastfeeding? And I was like, yes, it was horrible. Like, I mean, I, I so I exclusively breastfed for one month. I don't know how I did it. Yeah. There was days that we literally nursed for five hours. Like it was just, it was just insane. But yeah, the lactation consultants there were not specifically helpful. Mm-hmm. I wish I would have taken some kind of like a a course. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. Take a breastfeeding course beforehand. Yeah, it's so another thing not, I learned. They're not super um, helpful either. Though. Yeah. <laughs> not I mean not with like lip and tongue ties too and yeah oh yeah yeah and like I've learned so I mean I've learned obviously so much more since then mm-hmm. but you know I, I was just clueless and I was just like okay they said you know she's fine she doesn't have this so they're like I don't know why she's sure having such troubles and whatever so I mean the the nipple shield ended up being the main thing and then a little bit of pumping mm-hmm. and then when I went home it was just more of the you know the nipple shield but it still was taking so long and I, I was just questioning everything but yeah so then like you know once they decided to discharge me after going through all of that as much as I wanted to leave I was terrified I was like how do you expect me to go home after I feel like I legit just experienced a lot of trauma mm-hmm. and you expect me to take care of this baby somehow I mean, and I have, I had my husband, but like, you, you, so you expect me to like nurse her and like care for her. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. Like I legit thought <laughs> that I was like, I cannot go home. And they're like, we need your room. It's been four days. <laughs> oh like, my God. You go home. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I guess we're going home. So, uh, and I, I mean, I, I couldn't get in and out of bed still. I was, I was still very weak and I'm still in a lot of pain, but we packed up and we went home and unfortunately it didn't get any easier. It was then, you know, the baby blues continued and I didn't know what those were. <laughs> no idea what those were. I, I wasn't tired. Was. So I was like, I think I have postpartum depression. I'm like so grateful one minute and then I'm just like falling this sex and I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me. And, you know, finally I was able to look it up and find out what baby blues were. I was like, okay, this makes sense. But with the medication I was taking also, it like stopped me up. 
and I did not have any stool softeners on hand. You know, they told me, like, they did tell me in the hospital on that one, they're like, you, you know, you could, you could have some on hand if you want, you know, just in case. And I was like, I don't think I'll need it. <laughs> I needed it. Yeah. I needed it. Yeah. Uh, Take the colas, uh, ladies. <laughs> You what? Take the coles, ladies. Yes, take it. Take it. Don't try to do it without. Just have it on hand at least. I mean, yeah, there was one night in the middle of the night where I was trying to go, and I was like, this is not working. I don't know what's going on. Like, I never had that happen before. And uh, then, of course, my daughter woke up and was screaming, and my husband's trying to bring her to me. And I'm like, oh, God. I, I can't. I need to, you need to figure it out because I'm having troubles here. And <laughs> it didn't work. And I was just like, all right, give me the baby. You go get something from the store. It was like the middle of the night. It was probably like 2 a.m. I was like, you got to go get something because <laughs> I need help. So he ran out, grabbed that. But honestly, the rest of it was just like a huge blur. We were just in complete survival mode. Still had friends and family. Like, wanting to come and visit even like some of my husband's guy friends came at one point and they were like sticking around for hours mm. and I, I I got to the point where I, mean, I was just like get out <laughs> yeah. I was like I was over I was done being nice I, 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 I had just lost I was just like you know what I, I'm gonna need you guys to leave <laughs> get, <in here. laughs> get out of you <laughs> Uh, That's where my anxiety came from. I was like, you need to leave. I have to like be up all night and you guys don't. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then, you know, of course, like after the two weeks were up, my, cause my husband took off the two weeks and then he had to go back to work. And I was just like, I don't know how I'm going to survive. I still can't even hardly get out of, in and out of bed. Like the progress, I don't know why it took so long. I think it maybe it was because I was so weak from not like working out the whole pregnancy because I was sick or what. I was so weak and like I just I could hardly get up. So I was just like I don't know how anybody would do it. Um, like you know before that two week mark, I, I honestly had no idea because like I even after the two weeks, I was just like I don't know if I could do this. But yeah, so. You know, it was just survival mode, and after the two weeks, as far as hormones, slightly leveled out. I mean, I didn't go on to full, like, you know, postpartum depression or anything, but I did fall into, you know, postpartum anxiety. Hadn't heard of that either. Had no idea. All the things that I had no idea. You know, and then, like, even, uh, so we backtracked a little bit, with the, even with the breastfeeding, so I nursed exclusively for a month. But then I started switching to exclusive pumping. So I was like, this is just not working for us. Mm-hmm. You know, I got some flack for that. And I was like, like, with all I've been through, come on. <laughs> and, you know, people don't really see all that, that in-between stuff. But I was just like, I'm doing my best. But I, I fell into this anxiety. And I actually felt like if she had formula, she was going to die. So, like, <laughs> I don't know why. I know it sounds crazy, but it was like an obsessive thing where I was just like, she cannot have an ounce of formula because if she does, she's going to die. And it just sounds so crazy even saying it, but that kind of continued on this like anxious feelings. And I was planning to go back to work after three months. And I was like, Luke, I, I, I think I need to quit my job. I, there's no way I can quit with anybody. Like there's no way I didn't trust anybody. I kind of didn't even have trust with him sometimes. I was just like, what are you doing? That's not right. Like it was, it was just so much anxiety and I hadn't ever really dealt with that before in my life. So I had no, you know, I had no idea that that could happen. <laughs> um, so, you know, I kind of progressed. I didn't really want to leave the house a whole lot. I would, but like, I didn't like it at all. Finally, right before my daughter turned one, I started having like random panic attacks and I didn't know what was going on. I was just like, why is my heart racing? And like, uh, it just seemed like it was just out of nowhere. So finally, that was kind of like the wake up call that I needed to be like, okay, I, I need to talk to someone. I think I ended up seeing a counselor who told me like, oh, girl, you have postpartum anxiety. Like, I was like, what? Uh, okay. I didn't know that was a thing. And you know, we talked through it a little bit. I didn't see her that often or that much because shortly after that, the pandemic hit, and we decided to move. But like, at least I knew at that point what was going on mm-hmm. um and it you 
know, it took so much work just kind of getting back on track and, you know, working on myself and even considering having another child after going through all that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it was just something where I'm like, if we're, if we're going to do this ever again, I, like, really need to be in a good, <laughs> a good mental space because mm-hmm. that was just a lot. What's so funny, uh, though, Kelly, is, yeah. like, because we had our first you know, they're both three and a half years old. We were probably going through like the same thing at the same time. Yeah. (laughs) Not just like, Oh, it sounds so similar to my story, but like at the same time too. Yeah. Yeah, Were you, remind remind me, were you a C-section too? Or were you? No. uh -uh. Okay. But But you were going through a lot of the same like postpartum type stuff. Yes. All the feeding and anxiety and all that. Yeah. I mean, birth trauma too. She had the routine placenta. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's so it's so interesting because like it took me so long to even come to terms that I basically experienced trauma. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, and it wasn't like anybody's fault or anything. Like it it was just just the whole experience and I think a lot of it had to do with lack of preparation and knowledge and whatnot, but like it just all felt so Dramatic. And I, I had a hard time coming to terms with that because it was like, well, I didn't have emergency C section. I didn't have, you know, this like fast, intense birth where, you know, something almost happened to the baby or myself. Mm-hmm. You know, how could that be birth trauma or trauma in general? But like, you know, now looking back at it, I was like, yeah, that was dramatic. Like, yeah. it truly was. And it, it affected me so many different ways of my and aspects of my life and my personality even and like it's just kind of it's just kind of wild that you know it it can come in so many different forms Mm -hmm. and you know a lot of times people don't even see that like you don't see the signs so yep it's good to be aware of but but yeah so I think like working at the mental health like private practice has like made me understand how there's so many different levels of trauma and you know there might be like a car accident or like some like domestic violence to a birth Mm -hmm. that like didn't go the way that we imagined or things like that but like every trauma experience is so valid and you have to process it Mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah definitely yeah and I can take some time and and I do think like writing this out and you know, just talking about it more. Mm-hmm. I think you just come to more like realizations of, okay, that, you know, this is what this is. Yeah. And I think it's important to do that. And I think that's why it's so cool that you guys are doing this too. You and know, you to help too. people both process and, you know, and just kind of share. So educate people and every story is important. So thank you so much. And I feel the yeah. same way about your Instagram. I am like amazed oh. by all the stories I see and, just mm-hmm. I like love every day. I'm happy you have. guys are part of it too. It's been cool. It has we did been yours cool. today. It was awesome. Hopefully we can be like Instagram friends and like meet in person one day. <laughs> yeah. That'd be so cool. Be fun. <laughs> oh, <that'd> be awesome. <laughs> okay, so once we finally decided, all right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try for a second. I just I started tracking my cycle right away. It was kind of funny because with not having any like real what's the word I'm trying to say not having any real like control I guess over the first one yeah it was but like I wasn't I wasn't expecting it I was just like I want to be able to prepare for this I want to know so I started tracking my cycle the first month it you know didn't work but I ended up using one of those ovulation strips and we got pregnant very quickly after that it was a very natural cycle Mm -hmm. so I was kind of surprised honestly was like well what if it takes some time or whatever but we did get pregnant right away so with this time around in just a few weeks of finding out I was completely sick again nausea vomiting again mm-hmm. it was just like well the biggest difference this time was kind of talk to running around so yeah. <laughs> that made things fun but the biggest difference this time in a positive way was I had a new practice new OBGYN since I had moved and I made sure with them first. Like one of my first questions was, will you give me medication? (laughs) Because that lack of practice, I don't know what their deal was, but they were like, no, we can't take anything. And I'm like, oh. So this time around, I was like, 
you going to give me meds? If not, I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so they, we did, I tried, I tried everything else first. Obviously I tried like relief, which those aren't cheap. And I tried those like sea sickness bands. I tried all of it. They had me try B6, vitamin B6 and Unisom. Mm-hmm. I think it's B6. Yeah. I want to say. Mm-hmm. And Unisom. None of it worked. Finally, they prescribed Gesta, which was magical. <laughs> it was fantastic. Very expensive, but they helped me get it through a pharmacy called Transition Pharmacy, which ended up only being like $99 a month instead of like $500 a month or oh something God. ridiculous. What? Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. So that was ridiculous. It was, it, was, it was like, well, thank you, Transition Pharmacy, because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that saved a lot of money. But so and I like I would have paid it, too. I totally would have paid it because I was just like, this isn't good. That any any time I like forgot to take it or something, I'd spend the entire day throwing up. So I was like, well, oh. I'm going to pay whatever. And then they also had me taking like Unisom at night. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Unisom. It does mm-hmm. make you sleepy. Yeah. yeah. So I only took like a little bit of it in the evenings, but it did help with just taking the edge off. And yeah. like, I didn't, I barely that the the second pregnancy so that combo just like made all the difference in the world i was very tired all the time of course like my daughter ended up watching way more tv than i was hoping and i would sleep some of that time and then she would take like a two-hour nap during that time and i would sleep as well (laughs) i slept a lot (laughs) but i was able to like during the times that i was awake i was able to like Know, function and I was able to work out which honestly helped so much it helped with like you know my mental and physical health I ended up doing through was it? Oh, through beach body I did the bar blend prenatal mm-hmm. workout oh it was fantastic mm-hmm. it, it actually even like rehabilitated my bad knee that had surgery on a couple of times it was, it was crazy but that just helped so much mentally physically all of it but the pregnancy overall went okay. There were two small scares that I had, although in the moment, obviously, they felt big and scary. My first ultrasound, they told me I had a, a small subchorionic bleed that they were going to keep an eye on. And of course, you look everything up on Google and it just scared the crap out of me. But they're like, most of the time, it just like dissolves and does nothing and like, you're fine, which was what happened. So then the next was the 20 week ultrasound. They told me I had a low line placenta and they're like, you know, usually it migrates up and, you know, don't worry about it too much, but we want you on pelvic rest until 28 weeks for your next ultrasound. So of course, again, Googled it. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what, you know, this, is, this is crazy. So, but everything ended up being okay with that too. You know, it, it doesn't move, but it migrated up where it was out of the danger zone. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I mean, and going into the pregnancy too, I had you know, every intention of having a repeat C-section. I was like, mm-hmm. you know, I have a small pelvic inlet, you know, I, I don't have any other choice really. So, but I ended up having two friends very shortly before that, that just had had, like they had C-sections at first and ended up doing evacs, both of them. Mm-hmm. And they were like, recovery was so much better you know it was just like so much better experience and I didn't really know too much about VBACs but just hearing that kind of intrigued me so I started diving into the VBAC it's called the VBAC link podcast I don't remember the exact name but and then like Facebook groups and I I learned so much through that Oh my gosh, like it was so like it was empowering to hear all their stories and, you know, learning more about how the birth process worked. And it's funny because I never thought I would care or, you know, get into that because I had just a section first and I was just like, I don't need to know any of this stuff. But just listening to it, like it, it honestly, I was like, I want to become a doula. <laughs> I was like, this is so interesting. Mm-hmm. I like I, I had a medical, a little bit of a medical background. So like. I, I like hearing all this stuff. So, so yeah, I just completely dove into all of that. And in a couple of the stories, I, there was some that were similar to mine with them being told they had very small pelvic inlets and, you know, they had gone on to have a successful VBAC. So for months, I just like, listen and listen. And I was, and finally I was just like, you know what? I want to do a VBAC. <laughs> I want to try this. I researched, found a VBAC friendly provider. I was already in the third trimester by this time, so it was a little bit more difficult to find someone who would take me. 
Uh, but I got in and everything seemed to be going on the right track with that until like, and I think it was maybe a couple weeks in, I felt like a major shift in my stomach. And I was like, oh, she changed positions. And she was transverse. So I was like, yes, she went head down. Yeah. This is well, <laughs> she was not head down. No. She went breach. Oh, no. I was like, no. no. You gotta be kidding me. So, and she was Frank breach. So her legs were like straight up mm. and I tried spinning babies. I did everything I could to get this girl to flip, but she was stubborn. She was like, nope, not moving. Oh. Not moving. So I just kept being like, okay, I know sometimes they can flip. I, mean, I heard stories where they could even flip the labor. I was like, all right, well, we'll see, you know, I'm just going to keep this plan of, you know, potentially doing a V-back and whatnot. And so they gave me a date of, they're like, we can go to 39 plus four, I think it was, was the latest that they would go. And then they're like, if, you know, if you, if you don't go by then, then we'll, we're going to have to do a C-section. So I was like, all right, well, let's just keep going. Let's keep checking. You know, they started the cervical checks. And I, well, I was like, I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm going to refuse them. You know, <laughs> for, like hearing the podcast, but I, the curiosity got the better of me every single time. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, just checking. What am I? Am I Agree. Am I, <laughs> right? I was like, I've been doing all the dates. I've been, like, <laughs> I've been sitting on the ball. I'm like, just check me. Just tell me. And no, no, no progress whatsoever. <laughs> Again. So finally, I got to like, 38 and I was all right maybe I need to make a decision here and I was just like you know what all right and I think it was like halfway through 38 I was like no maybe it was a little sooner that I know they had me on the schedule I think it was a tentative but they had me on the schedule just in case and finally I was just like all right she hasn't moved nothing is working let's just do this (laughs) (laughs) so we did it and, uh, it, you know, it, it it was different, obviously, going in. I was a little bit more rested, which was nice, because that first time I was I was going on zero sleep. So I was a little bit more rested and whatnot. You know, I thought things were going to be a lot easier. Some ways they were, but this time they gave me some kind of different anesthesia. And I don't know what that stuff was, but during the procedure, I felt like, I couldn't even like, I, I felt like I was like fading. I don't know how else to explain it, but like, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I couldn't speak. And it, it was just like that last bit of control that I had from the first time mm-hmm. was like also gone. Oh, and no. so it still put me in this space of like panic. And I was just like, oh no, like, I, I'm like, I'm going to die. <laughs> I just kept thinking, I'm just going to fade away and I can't say anything and I can't do anything. And I was just like, if I make it through this, I'm never going to do it again. (laughs) So I obviously made it through, but like, you know, they pulled her out. She cried. I could hear her. You know, it was like a a moment of relief. Mm -hmm. I was able to slightly like open my eyes and, you know, I saw how much hair she was and I was like, oh my gosh, like I was able to (laughs) mumble out so much hair they took her got her measurements brought her over to me and this was a nicer experience where he got to stay in the room I don't know what was up that first one but he got to stay in the room with me he held her right next to me and we like were touching cheeks the whole time oh. which was so nice because I like I really and I have a picture of it it's like the sweetest thing ever but like yeah. I I couldn't do much but like I just kept my eyes closed and I just like just kept her cheek on mine and it was just like just such a better healing experience so and I think that's where that's where those emotions came from the first time because it just yeah. wasn't like that yeah. it wasn't like that the first time around mm-hmm. so so yeah this time we like went to the recovery room and yeah I started to come to more I was able to like talk to people mm-hmm. <laughs> it, was, it was weird but again the initial like feeding didn't really hurt but then after that I it got a little crazy i had some reactions to that anesthesia. I started vomiting again, which, by the way, is a horrible experience after a C-section. Oh. Horrible. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, so much pain. And that continued for, like, the next 24 hours. I also had, like, this weird itchy feeling 
which I didn't know was a thing. Like, yeah. my entire body felt itchy. So I was just, like, scratching everywhere. And I'm like, do I have rashes? Like, what's going oh, on? That's one of the but medications was... from, the, from the C-section. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. I don't know and what it's so... called. But then I have to give you another one to make you stop itching. Right. Yeah. yeah, so, and again, like, I couldn't have the pain medication. And this time, they actually just gave me Tylenol. Just straight Tylenol, and then they also gave me gabapentin. So it didn't really do much. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was definitely still painful, not going to lie. Like, And then, you know, the afterbirth contractions, with it being a second birth, definitely were pain more painful. Mm -hmm. I did try some, like, after-ease drops, which, I don't know. I don't know if they have really helped. I, I like to think that they helped, but I don't know what it would have been like otherwise. I just did it anyways. It was like... You know, maybe in my mind a little or something. <laughs> so I used those drops. But yeah, breastfeeding again was still like really just hard the second time around because I never really got it the first time. Mm -hmm. the, her latch seemed better, but it was just still so painful. And I was still like bleeding and everything. So, but this time around, I mean, I knew at least like I could pump. I could use a nipple shield as an option. So we were trying those kind of things. <clears throat> I, I was like, all right, she can have formula. Like, <laughs> I'm not doing that to myself again. Yeah. She'll be fine. We, you know, even at one point had her go to the nursery for a couple of hours so we could try to sleep, which I didn't know was a thing the first time. <laughs> so much better <laughs> in those ways. So much better. We did still have some weird issues. Like, I don't know. I was having, I was having some weird coughing fits. So like every time I would fall asleep, I would wake up choking, like mm -hmm. coughing and choking. I don't know what that was, mm -hmm. but it was pretty annoying for everyone involved. Yeah. <laughs> My husband was like, we finally get some sleep. <laughs> She's in the nursery and you can't stay sleeping. Okay. Like you're just coughing. Oh. And when you cough after C-section, also not great. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that was about. And it continued after I got home too. But overall, I mean, it was just so much better because like I was ready. I, I had the house ready. I had freezer meals i had help which is what is something i didn't have the first time because i didn't take it yeah I, no you know <laughs> you think you can do it all i had my mom stay with me for like several weeks you know we had my daughter too so my, my older daughter so we definitely need, needed to help mm -hmm. i had stool softeners ready i had <laughs> You know, I had the the binder ready to go, and like I knew, like I couldn't put it directly on my skin, and I had just I had all the things ready, <laughs> which which made it so much easier. I had sleep, you know, a place to sleep where I knew it wasn't going to be too much trouble with stairs. I didn't have nursing down even still once I got home, but I knew she had a lift and tongue tie. I could tell, even though again hospital lactation people said that she didn't and she definitely did and I had a the lactation consultant the home ones I swear they they know their stuff I, I don't know if it's like more of like more training or more recent training or whatnot I don't know but like she was amazing she came to my house she just it was a total game changer she gave me some stretches to do with my daughter's mouth like in with not sucking stuff and yeah. mm -hmm. oh game changer mm -hmm. when we awesome. were able to make it to 10 months until she self-weaned basically but yeah I mean, overall like when I didn't have like that level of anxiety anymore just it was just so, so much better it was very <laughs> like healing I think mm -hmm. the second time around and yeah I mean obviously in the end it was all of it was very worth it but yeah, we we've decided though that <laughs> we're we are done with that piece of life. We will not be having any more children. <laughs> Got a vasectomy. We're we're good. Yeah, <laughs> good decision for us. <laughs> Two and done. I was like, I I don't I don't want to like go backwards here. Like the second one felt, even though it was hard, it felt healing to me. Like I don't need to go backwards. We're yeah. good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> They're so cute. So, you did so good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. it's, it's a it's a ride. <laughs> but yeah, and even like the, the relationship side of it, like oh, it's just like just so much you just don't think of, and like you hear oh yeah, no, you know, 
things change when you have a baby. Things change. <laughs> oh yes. my gosh, everything <laughs> changes. Like you change as a person. Your you and your spouse change. Like your spouse themselves change. Like every like everything changes mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. But it's just a matter of like figuring it all out, getting through, and you come out stronger for it. So. Yeah. So true. <laughs> So how but, do you think your experience impacted kind of your Instagram and you started, oh, baby, I had no idea. Yeah. So, you know, with the, all those crazy experiences, like, obviously I've learned so much and, you know, I, I really do feel like that listening to that podcast and like just learning through that, oh, it just gave me so much more knowledge and power. And I was just like, man, knowledge is power. I and mean, <laughs> you know that, but like, when it comes to a baby and a child and just all the things surrounding that, oh, it is just so powerful and helpful to hear other people's stories. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and just to be able to, you know, process things as well, kind of like, you know, how people do on your, on your podcast here. It's like just writing it out and sharing your stories sometimes can be so healing for you. Mm -hmm. But it's also so helpful to somebody else. Like, you know, if, if I had a resource like this going into it, oh, I just think of how much would have changed, you know, how much better it would have been potentially mm -hmm. not feeling so alone and not feeling so scared of everything. And, you know, being able to recognize what baby blues are and what postpartum anxiety is and, you know, how hard breastfeeding can be and what resources there are. So, you know, just personal experience that really kind of drove the creation of this and being like, I don't want people to go <laughs> basically go through what I went through. And, you know, with all the knowledge I gained, I'm like, I feel like I, I want to help in some way. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that kind of sparked the idea of, and that was only one of the, one of the parts of it. I and mean, there was definitely like other factors, like family members that, you know, have traumatic events and, and whatnot that, you know, I didn't uh, always understand and wanted to know more. Mm -hmm. That was another huge part of it of like, okay, you know, there's support groups out there, but, and that's great. But what about, what about the rest of us? Like, I don't know. I don't know how to, handle these situations I don't know you know if what this person who has what had a loss or whatever I don't know what they need I don't know what to do I don't know what to say so being able to share those you know kind of harder stories gives the rest of us if we haven't been through it a chance to be like okay like if I know if I if I have somebody currently in my life or if this happens to someone that I know chances are one of these things is going to happen to someone you know then to have a better knowledge of how to help them yeah mm -hmm. so so yeah it was a mix of you know all of that personal experience that I had yeah. you know the family and you know just this like this passion of like how how can I how can I help people to not go through that alone and you know and throughout all stages of parenthood not to feel alone and kind of how can we do this all together yeah. you know especially like especially for people who don't have a village or you know don't know where to start uh you know don't have a lot of friends that you know even if they have help but they don't have friends maybe they're the first of their friends or family to go through it to have that support through other people's stories so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah for sure. I kinda, that's where that all stems <laughs> from so I love that's it. really cool. <laughs> yeah. All the pregnant mamas out there should definitely check out Kelly's Instagram. Oh, baby, I had no idea. It's so fun yeah. and has such good insight every single day. Yeah, every day. <laughs> I love it. We yeah. got, what do we got? Mighty Moms Monday, Tykes and Tot Tuesday. What's Whatever one? Wednesday, because, you know, <laughs> it was supposed to be Tuesday Wednesday where I was going to share, like, knew this and stuff like that but it's it's for right now it's been busy i'm like it's whatever wednesday whatever I feel like <laughs> yeah whatever works whatever I for, you know then yeah birthday thursday future friday 
Saturday. <laughs> I, I love that one. I, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I swear. I feel like the Saturday ones are like some of everybody's like favorite sometimes because it's like you don't often hear the guy's side of it. No. And, like, mm-hmm. It's so helpful for me too because I'm like, wow, like how my husband feels, and then I'm always like, did you feel this? <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I did not know. And, you know, it's so oftentimes the the dad side just doesn't get brought up, and you don't really think about it. And it's just like you're just trying to survive and take care of this kid, and you don't. I mean, you try, you try yeah. to think about it, but like you don't really know because a lot of times they just don't talk about it. So yeah. it's been very cool to hear that that part of it. But yeah, yeah. That's awesome. How that all came out. I love it. Do you have, yes. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) I'm so happy it like brought us to you and like the collaborations that we're doing is really exciting. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's very cool. And you guys are doing amazing. So are you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Do you have any other resources that you would want to share or advice from Um, new parents? Yeah. Probably. Like, I've shared some of them. I I love, honestly, like, even, okay, I haven't shared this one, but, like, the be back link, even, like, for somebody who has been in my situation, so helpful if you're looking for VBACs. I, I, I want to say that's what it is. Maybe we can put it in the show notes. Or something. Sure. I want to say it's be back link. But, and then just, I, I love the Empowered Birth page, at the Empowered Birth, I think mm-hmm. is what it is. Yeah. Her page, or no, sorry. Empowered Start. Empowered Start. That's what it is. Her page is awesome. It's It seems like it's very, like, helping people prepare for birth. She's got a whole course out there. I love that. So she's one that I found. Balance After Birth. Mm-hmm. She's helping people, you know, after birth. So that postpartum period, which is awesome. Like a postpartum doula. Mm-hmm. Did not even know those. They existed. <laughs> Amazing. Doulas in general. I am all for it. Obviously, I didn't self, mm-hmm. but if I had had the traditional, like, you know, known from the get go with the second birth and everything, totally do that. Yeah. Uh, and Lactation Express is one that I found. She's awesome. I, she also does like free breastfeeding courses, which is huge. Mm-hmm. And then she does like video stuff if you're not in local to her area I think she's North Carolina don't quote me on that but she's awesome with that has awesome tips on her page as well at the underscore breastfeeding underscore father Eric he's been awesome he supports both moms and dads surrounding like breastfeeding and like that whole transition and also making sure the dad doesn't feel like left out giving ways to like support and bond and you know it's it's there struggling with depression he's a really good resource for that oh just so many i feel like we could just go on miscarriage doula at the miscarriage doula for like that side of it Mm -hmm. fertility unscripted i want to say for infertility stuff there's just so many i think it's so cool that social media in general has like become a resource like yeah Mm -hmm. it is like coolest thing ever because you know and and I had such a negative thought before about social media I'm just like you know like part of me was even nervous to start this page because I'm like you know you've got the trolls the haters and and like although it doesn't really affect me too much like you know it's just always something that's just like oh something you have to deal with Mm -hmm. but and then you you know Instagram you see like the pretty things and I love that it's changing it seems like it's getting to be, at least from what I see more, maybe it's just who I follow now, but <laughs> it's becoming more like open and honest and yeah, more sure. resource style. And I don't know. I just love that. Yeah. Love it's, it's definitely changed. more authentic. And I love all the mom, like the humor mom page. Yeah. <laughs> yes. it's great. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite. I love that. Yeah. But yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This was amazing. And I'm. I'm so glad you guys asked me to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you 
this. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so much reflection, too. My gosh. I literally, it was up so late last night and, like, working throughout it today because I was like, man, I, you know, initially I was like, I don't know if I'm going to have much to talk about because I had C-sections. But no, once <laughs> I start writing it down and unpacking, oh, my gosh. Like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so it's just like forcing yourself to do that. Everybody should do it. If you had a baby, do it and then record with you guys because I love this. This was so fun and just enlightening. I love it. Thank you. I'm so happy you enjoyed it and like had that time to like unpack yourself. Probably because, yeah. I mean, it's probably been like, what, three and a half years with your first daughter that you actually like taken the time. Maybe. Yeah. I know that you said that you did some therapy, so, you know. Yeah, and I did it slightly when I first started, and I planned on doing it more in, like, blogs and stuff, but Mm -hmm. I just honestly haven't had time. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that this was the time. This was the time that I was able to do that. So (laughs) I love that. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Well, thank you so much again, you know, for those of you who want to see what Kelly's up to on Instagram. Again, you can follow Oh Baby, I Had No Idea. Yeah. Yeah. We'll link it in the show notes as well. And just go ahead and leave us a little five-star review and share with your friends and family so we can get the podcast out to more ears and hopefully help some more parents. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Um, good. Yeah. And, you know, feel free to reach out to us via Instagram or Facebook if you ever wanted to share your story. And we would love to be in touch. All right. Thank you. See you next episode. Yeah.